Now, I'm pleased to introduce our student speaker for the class of 2020, Dr. Nadira Nurani Afifa, who earned a Master of Public Health degree from the Department of Global Health and Population. Nadira joined the nutrition concentration where she was involved in several projects related to malnourished children, especially stunting in low and middle income countries. During her studies, she had the opportunity to visit Tanzania to work on malnutrition issues among in-school adolescents in the city of Dodoma, along with several other Harvard students. Nadira grew up in Jakarta, Indonesia, and received her MD degree, cum laude, from Universitas Indonesia. She previously served as a general practitioner in rural West Nusa Tenggara, Indonesia, where she worked on multidimensional issues from child nutrition to poverty. Outside of the academic world, Nadira writes for a variety of newspapers. Today, she aims to help the Indonesian government address several public health challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic. She believes that her experience working both as a clinician and a public health professional will uniquely position her to contribute to the future vibrant development of Indonesia. Nadira, welcome back. Good afternoon, everyone. Greetings to Dean Kim, faculty, staff, and alumni, and to the class of 2020. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to our parents, friends, and loved ones, without whom today would not be as special as it is a day we have all earned and cherished together. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, when you were little and you were asked, what do you want to be when you grow up, said public health professional? <laughs> Me neither, yet here we are. Two years have passed since we graduated, and it still feels surreal for me to be on this podium and gather with you all once again in our beloved school. For me, Harvard Chan plays a very important role in my public health journey. I will never forget my first day of orientation at this school. I ate my lunch in the bathroom stall with my feet on the toilet seat so no one would know that I was there. Back then, I was so afraid of everything. Above all, the coffee breaks. I didn't know what to say. I was afraid of saying something wrong. And I was afraid of being seen as different. Even by just wearing a hijab, I already made my identity clear without even needing to tell anyone what I believe in and I had seen a lot of news around Islamophobia, and it concerned me. However, in just my second week at school, my perception began to change. I found a praying room downstairs. Surprisingly, the school provides us with a very convenient praying room, equipped with all things we need for praying. What made it even more special, it was my Jewish friend who showed me the room because he saw me praying under the stairwell. Equality, inclusivity, unity. I cannot think of any better place I could learn those concepts but here. Little by little, Harvard Chan and all its people have become my new home, 10,000 miles away from my original one. Albeit slowly, I came back to be the confident person my mom has raised me to be. My mom is here, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah. so, Mama has always been the one who inspires me. She's the youngest child of 11 siblings, born and raised by a rural farmer in a rural Sumatran island in Indonesia. Farmer's kids didn't go to school those days. Her sisters and brothers worked very hard to get mama to college, and she didn't take it for granted. When I was a kid, mama taught me an important lesson of life. Dream high, because our only limits is our mind. That is what keeps her going through the tough times. Despite being underprivileged, mama managed to raise three children who all completed master's degrees. <laughs> Yeah. 
The values that mama taught me keeps echoing all my life. She raised me from a student in a small town in Indonesia to a graduate from the best public health school in the world. From the beginning of my journey as a public health professional, I promised myself that I would always apply my knowledge and contribute to society. And I encourage you all to promise that we will not stop ourselves from leaping higher and making an impact to the world through public health. Public health provides us with the opportunity to save the lives of millions and improve the health and longevity of generations and generations to come. It is only through public health that we can see the entire countries setting aside their differences and pooling their resources to end the pandemic. And COVID has shown us that no matter how privileged we are or no matter where we come from, we are exposed to the same risk that only through helping each other, we will survive. For a moment, people are united through public health efforts, despite the difference in ethnicity, nationality, or spirituality. My sisters and brothers, you have chosen to be here today because you are called to serve, to dignify the lives of people you've never even met or you may never meet. Your contributions make the world better and the healthier place to live in. So let me change the question. How many of you now can proudly say, I'm glad to be a public health professional? <laughs> Class of 2020, let's continue our journey in the often exciting, sometimes exhausting, rarely appreciated, but always important work of public health. Thank you.